The Symbolism of Chess Why did Lewis Carroll, see our video on the mysticism of Lewis Carroll, choose chess as the underlying game of his second book, Alice Through the Looking Glass? His first book, Alice in Wonderland, was about the shamanic world of animals and plants. But his second was not even written for children and is far more symbolically complex. To understand his reason, we need to understand the symbolism of chess. As a game, it is a great deal more brutal than we may think. Players can sacrifice any of their pieces, including the Queen, in order to win. Even those pieces we may think are the most useful can be removed if it serves the purpose of defeating the opposition. Only the king cannot be removed, and it is his defeat the players aim for. Origin and the Pieces Chess originated in India. For those who think it was China, the Chinese chessboard had its origin in India, Its very early origins may have been in the Indus Valley. Archaeological remains have been found from 2000 to 3000 BC in the city of Lathal of pieces on a board that resemble chess. In India, chess was known as Chaturanga. It was passed on to the medieval West through the Middle East, particularly Persia and it was adopted as Shatranje in Sassanid Persia. A description of the game, for example, can be found in the 9th century The Golden Prairies or The Meadows of Gold by Al-Mazudi. Many terms come from Persia. The expression checkmate, for example, is derived from the Persian Shah, king, and the Arabic Mat, he is dead. The ancient Indian strategic model remains obvious. The two armies ranged according to the battle order which was customary in the ancient East. The light troops, represented by the pawns, form the first line. The bulk of the army forms the second line, the heavy troops. Castles were once the war chariots. See the right of the picture. The original name was Uruch, not Rook. Rucha or Hathi. See our video on the symbolism of the chariot. Knights derive from what was once the cavalry. See our video on the symbolism of horses. Bishops were once war elephants, occasionally camels. Umpt or Hati. See our video on the symbolism of elephants. The schematic representation of an elephant's head with its big ears. Link it to hairs and horns. See our video, the symbolism of horns and the symbolism of hairs. The king remains the king, the Raja. This king is from the Lewis chess set. And in Indian sets, he was seated on a huge war elephant. See our video on the symbolism of the sun. And again, the symbolism of elephants. The queen was once his lady or counsellor, the vazir. And this is Lewis Carroll's white queen. And she became a separate queen, a rani, as the game moved west. 
see also our video on the symbolism of the moon. And this is the Queen in the British Museum's Lewis chess set. The bulging eyes are a symbol of intense spiritual experience. The warlike symbolism in the Indian game relates it to the Kshatriyas. The caste of princes and nobles. The Hindus consider the game of chess as a school of government and defence. It is really an allegory, similar to that explained in our video on the symbolism of the theatre. Life is simply a repeating game of spiritual chess in which all are pieces. The board. The form of the chessboard symbolizes existence as a field of action of the divine powers. It was always squared, but the contrasting colors are a relatively recent addition. We are all pieces, but it is possible that both of the combatants may legitimately consider himself correct. See our video, The Symbolism of Ash. In essence, these two forces are not good or bad. The great work, the objective, can be achieved in more than one way, and the battle pits one strategy against another. Occasionally, a player may need to sacrifice a great number of their pieces. From the pieces' point of view, their death in this game would be classified as bad. But then, it is not their game. Certain Buddhist texts describe the universe as a board of 8 by 8 squares, fixed by golden cords, and these squares correspond to the 64 kalpas. In both Hindu and Buddhist tradition, a kalpa is considered to be the length of a single cycle of the cosmos or the day of Brahma, from creation to dissolution. In evolutionary terms, it might be classified as an eon, ended by an extinction event. Thus, this game's meaning is metaphysical. We are the pieces in the cycles of time of the gods, and they can do with us what they please. Sacrifice us, if need be, in order to destroy the old and begin a new cycle. In the Chinese tradition, the 64 signs are derived from the trigrams in the I Ching. The Astrological Connection According to Titus Burkhart Titus Burkhart, The Symbolism of Chess, Source Studies in Comparative Religion, Volume 3, Number 2, Spring 1969. King Balhit is said to have composed a book on the game of which he made a sort of allegory of the heavenly bodies, such as the planets and the twelve signs of the zodiac, consecrating each piece to a star. It may be recalled that the Hindus recognise eight planets, the sun, the moon, the five planets visible to the naked eye, and Rahu, the dark star of the eclipses. Each of these planets rules one of the eight directions of space. The cyclical symbolism of the chessboard resides in the fact that it expresses the unfolding of space according to the quartinary and octonary of the principal directions. Four by four by four, equals 8 by 8, and that it synthesizes in crystalline form the two great complementary cycles of Sun and Moon, the Diodenary of the Zodiac and the 28 lunar mansions. Furthermore, the number 64, the sum of the squares on the chessboard, is a sub-multiple of the fundamental cyclic number 
25,920, which measures the precession of the equinoxes. Each phase of a cycle, fixed in the scheme of 8 by 8 squares, is ruled by a heavenly body, and at the same time symbolises a divine aspect, personified by a diva. Al-Masudi is therefore right to say that the Indians explain, by calculations based on the chessboard, the march of time and the cycles, the superior influences which are exerted on this world, and the bonds which attach them to the human soul. The game itself. Chess is a board game played between two players. It is an abstract strategy game where each player, one controlling the white pieces, the other controlling the black or red pieces, controls 16 pieces, one king, one queen, two castles, two bishops, two knights, and eight pawns. The object of the game is to checkmate the opponent's king, whereby the king is under immediate attack, in check, and there is no way for it to escape. There are also several ways a game can end in a draw. This combat symbolically is thus that of two contrasting forces who dispute the chessboard of the world. The battle which takes place on the chessboard represents that of two terrestrial armies controlled by two celestial opponents, each of which is fighting in the name of a principle one objective, but two different strategies. One can also see the relationship of the symbolism implied in the game of chess with the theme of the Bhagavad Gita, Titus Burkhart, the symbolism of chess. The movement of the chess pieces corresponds to different ways of realising the cosmic possibilities represented by the chessboard. There is the axial movement of the castles or war chariots, which cuts through the different colours, the masculine, the diagonal movement of the bishops, the feminine, the complex movements of the knights corresponds to intuition. Thus the players can use the masculine, the feminine, or use intuition. The game also demonstrates the relationship between free will and fate. The options always remain intelligible and are not limited in their variation, whereas any game using dice introduces fate and chance. And remember, Albert Einstein said, God does not play dice with the universe. At each stage of the game, the player is free to choose between several possibilities, but each movement entails a series of unavoidable consequences, so that necessity increasingly limits free choice, the end of the game being seen not as the fruit of hazard, but as the result of rigorous laws. Freedom of action is here in complete solidarity with foresight and knowledge of the possibilities. Contrary wise, blind impulse, however free and spontaneous it may appear at first sight, is revealed in the final outcome as a non-liberty. The royal art is thus to govern the world, outward and inward, in conformity with its own laws. This art presupposes wisdom, which is the knowledge of possibilities. As such, true wisdom is a more or less perfect identification with the spirit, Purusha. Spirit is truth. Through truth, man is free 
outside truth is the slave of fate. That is the teaching of the game of chess. Thank you.